Hi everyone, George here at Aquarium Gardens and today we're going to talk about measuring CO2. What is CO2 and why do we need to measure it? So CO2 is carbon dioxide. About 40% of a plant is made from carbon, so by adding more carbon dioxide we can improve our plant growth. However, if we add too much CO2 we can pose a risk to our livestock. So we need to measure that CO2 so it's high enough for the plants but low enough to keep it a safe level for our livestock. Okay, the old-fashioned way of measuring CO2 was to test the aquarium water pH and KH and then we get those readings and then we cross-refer them to a pH KH CO2 table which you can find on the internet. Let's do that right now. We add 10 ml of water to the vial which is about that much and then we add five drops of the pH reagent. One, two, three, four, five and then we give it a shake and then you're supposed to wait 60 seconds check out your reading on there so this is very subjective and this is where this type of testing for CO2 has a lot of room for error so we're between so I would say pH 6.6 .6 and 6.9 there so let's sort of take an average of that and say it's 6.7 6.8 now we need to test our KH Okay, let's test for our KH. So we get five mil of tank water in our syringe. Pop it in the test tube. And then we add the KH reagent, one drop at a time, two. And eventually it will change from blue to orange. And we count those drops. Every drop is half a degree KH. So we've added two drops already, three, four drops. So that's two degrees KH. Eight degrees, eight degrees KH. Probably just eight and a half. Definitely changed now. So we're talking between eight and nine degrees KH. Now we can cross refer that to our table, which I'll show you right now. Okay, best way to find the CO2 chart on the internet, Google CO2 pH KH chart. Oosh. There we go. And then just click on images. Let's have a look. First image. And view image. Oosh. Okay, here we go. So if we remembered what we got, we got between pH seven and pH eight. So we look along here, pH seven, pH eight, and we had a KH of eight or nine, wasn't it? Between 38 and 48 parts per million CO2. And that is saying that it's too high. So potentially uh, dangerous to our livestock. However, uh, we've got cherry shrimp in there, which are absolutely fine. In fact, they're breeding in there and we do have a high level of oxygen, so that's an interesting point. The more oxygen we have in the tank, the more CO2 we can get away with. So if I was a beginner, I would be a bit wary of this level, but because I know what I'm doing and I can see the shrimp are absolutely happy and breathing and, and active, then we know that they're fine. But this is the old school way of, of measuring CO2 and it's very inaccurate. It relies on you interpreting colors on a, on a chart. It relies on those test kits being accurate to start with. So lots of lots of room for error. Okay, so we talked about the old school way of measuring CO2, which is using a separate pH test kit, KH test kit, cross-referring those results on the table and then coming up with a value. And we talked about why that can be inaccurate. Another reason it can be inaccurate is because it's relying only on CO2 being the source of acid in the aquarium. So when CO2 dissolves in water, it creates carbonic acid and that creates a pH difference. And it's that relationship which we rely on to determine our CO2. But the fact of the matter is, in a mature aquarium especially, there's lots of other acid, acidifying compounds in the water, such as nitric acids, humic acids, and they're going to have an influence on the pH. So we can get massively skewed results. So what can we do? Well, we use a really cool device, which is called a CO2 drop checker. And this is awesome, really easy, instant way check we've got enough CO2. So you can see the colour here, it's like a lime green colour. Now that is perfect, that means the aquarium has around about 30 parts per million CO2. 
which is safe for fish, but also an optimum level for the plants. If we have much more than 30 parts per million, that becomes toxic. Much less than that, and then the plants aren't really benefiting so much from the CO2. So this is our optimum color. Now, if this becomes more yellow, it means that there's more than 30 parts per million in CO2 and therefore potentially unsafe for livestock. If it becomes more blue, then it means that there's less than 30 parts per million and potentially not so good for the plants. So this is the optimum colour and I'll show you exactly how we install this right now. We've got our CO2 drop checker solution here which is ready mixed. It's water which is exactly 4 degrees kh and then we have our drop checker here made of glass and our pipette. Really really easy to prepare. Undo our bottle, get some liquid in our pipette there and then just put a little bit in here and then if we just tap and then we have our drop checker prepared. This now sits in the aquarium, constantly measures our CO2 content. Now you can see this is blue, which means it's much less than 30 parts per million, which is understandable because there's no CO2 in here yet. Once we put this in the aquarium, after about two to three hours, maybe a bit longer, it will change colour depending on what the CO2 level is in the aquarium water. So let's pop that in our aquarium now. Okay, so we've got the CO2 drop checker just been prepared, so it's blue, which means there's nowhere near 30 parts per million CO2. Now let's fast forward three hours. Okay, here you can see that the CO2 drop checker is very yellow, which means far too much CO2 in there. Got a CO2 diffuser in the jug, absolutely smashing the CO2 in that water, just to prove a point that too much CO2 does make the drop checker go super yellow. Okay, so we talked about how to install our CO2 drop checker. Next, we need to discuss uh, when to put the CO2 on and off. Now, a really, really handy device, very cheap, is the plug-in timer. And when I'm using a pressurised CO2, I always like to use a solenoid. Now, I did do a video about how to install a CO2 system, so link just above right now. So these turn the CO2 on and off according to whether there's power supply, and we can control that power with the solenoid. So what we like to do here at Aquarium Gardens, and I also like to do at home, is have the CO2 come on about two to three hours before the lights come on. What that does, it allows the CO2 levels to build up so the plants can photosynthesize as efficiently as possible as soon as the lights come on. And they normally have the CO2 go off around about an hour or half an hour before the lights go off. And that allows the plants to use up that residual level of CO2 in the water. So plug-in timer and solenoid, really, really good way to control your CO2. I'm not a really, really big fan of pH controllers. Some people like to use a pH controller with their CO2 kit, each their own, but personally, I just rather use the solenoid and have that CO2 consistently throughout the photo period. Okay, so that wraps it up for today's video about CO2 measuring. You can look forward to another video on CO2 soon, all about how to deliver that CO2 in the aquarium. So we'll talk about different types of diffusers and reactors, etc. So if you've liked the video, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and keep on scaping. Cheerio. plants very quickly. Uh, if you watched one of my previous videos oh, in more carbon, which is stupid, can't remember my words, for fish. So we 
Night. Uh, 